Hey everybody, this is Perch, and uh, ever since Lululemon reached out to sponsor this channel, uh, I've had a lot of promotions reach out, or I'm just now noticing them. Here's one from Baby Ghost NFT. Hello, we are the Baby Ghost team. We would like to offer you cooperation advertising. We are willing to pay you. Are you ready? $700 for a 20-second video at the beginning of your video. NFT drop will start soon, so we're looking forward to hearing from you. Kind regards. All right, well, clearly... If you are looking to waste your money on NFTs, then what better way? See, even my car is excited about that. Did you hear beeping there? It's uh, it's it's all in, uh, all in on baby ghost NFTs. If you are looking to blow money on NFTs, um, then why not baby ghost NFTs? The baby ghost NFTs are uh, presumably ghosts, uh, little cartoon ghosts that are babies, uh, and they are they are apparently they're they're aborted children is because uh, they're babies, right? So, I well, maybe we're going to get into the whole when is conception argument going here. But I, because they're baby ghosts, I'm assuming that, uh, you know, to meet demand of all the people who want baby ghost NFTs, that they are going to uh, to need to, to, you know, handle a bunch of uh, aborted children. And that's so you can buy an NFT cute cartoon image of an aborted uh, ghost baby if uh, you go. So uh, I... I am all in on this. Um, as you can tell from my voice, very enthusiastic. Love this idea. Love everything about it. Who wouldn't? You know, ghost, uh, cute ghost NFTs of uh, dead children. Why not? Why Why not? Indeed. I'll, I'll look forward to that $700. So anyway, um, I, I have this, uh, this viewer question that's a little bit more, I, I'd say a little bit better here. It is... Um, uh, this is tackling race uh, on comics, and and really this is almost less of a question and more of just a statement that I can react to, but it's a good one. It's a good statement. So it says, uh, hey, Perch Love Channel, thank you, as always, and uh, don't forget, dead children NFTs. That's uh, that's where it's at. So uh, loyal, loyal viewers know that if you want dead children NFT cartoons, then Baby Ghost has you covered. When uh, Mr. Miracle, the source of his mail goes, uh, when Mr. Miracle's Source of Freedom was released, I bought number one. Yeah, me too. Uh, right out the gate, I was hit with racial commentary, preachy writing, etc. It sucked the life out of the book for me. I have no interest in paying even $4 a month for a lecture because, let's be real, everyone already knows our opinions on these topics. We don't need a comic to bring us these messages if we want them. They are all over social media. I have more comments on that in a second, but let's let's continue on with this message. I heard you recently say that CW shows are predictable. The sad thing is they aren't. Arrow wasn't when it started. That that is true. Uh, the Flash had its moments. They were moments. Uh, Superman and Lois wasn't predictable. Yeah. Supernatural was in a whole other league. Uh, Supernatural was good. I do think that um, as more time has gone by, uh, we feel better about Supernatural. It's kind of one of those things like. Well, the the all the things that came behind it were so much worse. So uh, that 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 show looks better in comparison. Don't don't get me wrong; it's a good show, but uh, some people talk about it as the best show ever created. And it, it, it it's not that, but you know, it, it's a good show. No, no, you know, I should have just said nothing. It's the shows that feature a non-white or female lead that are predictable because these characters cannot help themselves but to radicalize the story. Is it radical lies anymore when it when uh, people bring up the same themes over and over and over again? This is my question. Um, I, I see people say like these are you know radicalization ideas, but if it's the same idea in in story after story after story, is it radicalization at that point, or is it you know just just I, I don't know. I, I have a hard time calling something radical that appears you know everywhere. But anyway, it's fine. Um, it's almost selfish for a writer to say, I don't care how many people want a badass vixen action show. I want the praise of telling an anti-racism feminist story. Hell, look at Zorro. One reference to lead as Latinx has uh, already limited the series audience, and it's barely into production. It's the here we go again meme. DC and Marvel are worlds of intergalactic space forces, alternate dimensions, cosmic gods, and alien invasions. Focusing black stories on race to this extent is such a waste. Whether it's comics or live action, these publishers need to do a better job of just letting black superheroes be superheroes. Okay, a lot, a lot there. Um, I do think that there's a weird... I think we'll look back on this uh, years from now and go... You know, a lot of the efforts to promote uh, equality wound up doing the opposite. They took black superheroes that were, I, I don't know, already ingrained. Like, like if you take John Stewart uh, via the Justice League 
you know, for, forgetting the current Green Lantern title. I mean, way back, I mean, he was a he was a Green Lantern in the cartoon. He was a Green Lantern in, in multiple runs of Justice League, uh, taking um, Rhodey from a War Machine, from um, um, uh, from Iron Man or uh, Luke Cage or Blade or any of these characters, and they they had big amazing epic cosmic moments uh james rhodes was in secret wars the original one with beyonder not tony stark and the the idea that this character is off having those kinds of heroics and years ago like 30 30 40 years ago and then you know fast forward to 2022 and we're needing to tell their story in a six-page backup in marvel voices it feels like uh in an attempt to add a spotlight to the character they've actually trivialize the character they've 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 reduced the character rather than bring them up um it was i think you saw this on display and i'm not going to go into it for the 50th time because i've done videos on it but when sam wilson a character was built up as a falcon uh, kind of built up built up built up and and to his credit reminders build up of sam wilson to captain america was pretty good it was, it was pretty it, it, the character was showing more heroics it was showing more complexity they were you know tackling major threats that could destroy the whole world and everything else and then uh, we got, finally, uh, Sam Wilson in the Captain America costume, and immediately the stories are about you don't belong because black people don't deserve to be Captain America and a bunch of racists. And suddenly, rather than fighting like cosmic-level threats, the character is fighting the hillbilly crew of, you know, some kind of Proud Boys metaphor. And it's like, well, first of all, Sam Wilson's just going to mop the floor with these people. I mean, Sam, if you, if you have... You know, if you have James Rhodes going up against the Beyonder, then to do a storyline where James Rhodes has to fight some racist hillbillies, I mean, like, really? Like, I, I, I would love to see the story. Honestly, I would love to see this comic where Sam Wilson, James Ro uh, Joe, yeah, Rhodey, uh, John Stewart, whatever happens to be Vixen is another. Vixen's a, if you look at Vixen's power set, Vixen is so ridiculously overclocked as a character. Vixen could... If you if you look at her power set, could beat the shit out of Superman. Seriously, you you're like no 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 no. Go look it up. She can stack these powers that she has, these animal powers, and keep the complexity. I mean, like forget about it. But what I would like to do is like have hey, do it with Vixen. Vixen's like running to do something, like or or basically Vixen is is uh, I I don't know monitoring the Hall of Justice or whatever. And the call comes in. It's like hey Vic, hey we need uh, there's a bunch of racists down here. And they're getting a little unruly. They're uh, they're starting to throw bricks uh, at at windows. I, I don't know, whatever. They're they're just they're protesting and they're noisy and they're starting to be jerks. And uh, we need you to get down here and help. And Vixen's like, oh, fuck off. I'm I, you know, call me back when Dark Side comes around. You can handle it yourself. You know, <laughs> get get some get some police. Just get get us uh, get some strongly uh, worded. Uh, anyway, uh, you you get the idea. Like, I'd, lo I'd love to see that story where like, John Stewart's like, I don't have time for this crap. No, thank you. No, no, you, you can handle the hillbillies over there. You can handle the, the, the hillbilly races who are trying to, like, tip over the truck at a, uh, I, I don't know, some shelter. Like, I'm, I'm over here fighting Sinestro. Like, I, <laughs> you take care of that one. That would be awesome. Uh, anyway, I, I think that you're right. Uh, to, to the original writer's point, I, I liked Mr. Miracle. I liked the backup story in Future State of Mr. Miracle. And then they did that Source of Freedom book. And it was like, hey, it's like that we got teased with uh, how badass Shiloh could be. And then it's like, and now for his uh, this number one issue, let's, let's talk about racism. It's like, <laughs> really? And I don't say that because I'm like, I'm not one of these people like, there's no racism and it makes me uncomfortable to talk about. It, it, it's not uncomfortable to talk about. It's stupid to talk about in a comic where you've got, you know, parallel dimensions and evil Superman flying around. And like, I mean, you've got major level threats to, to have the comic come out and immediately jump into this. And it is predictable that if the, if the big two are going to a comic uh, that's going to feature a person of color, it's like the writer's like, well, you, you do understand that at least half of this book is going to need to be about racism. And uh, no, again, if I'm that writer, I'm like, no, no, I'm not writing that. No, I, I'm not going to have the, uh, this book be a cookie cutter by the numbers. It turns out, and this is going to blow some people's minds. It turns out 
that, uh, you know, black, Latino uh, superheroes uh, can, can have more complexity than fighting against racism. There's, there's more things they can do. You might think that that's all they can do, that there's, there's no, they have no abilities beyond just fighting racism or commenting on racism. That's, that's the extent of their abilities. But to, but, but you are racist for thinking that. <laughs> like, that's the crazy part is so many of these stories that come out, you look at this and you're like, the editor is clearly racist <laughs> for, for, for doing, giving us like, oh, here's a, here's a story about uh, Robbie Reese, the new ghost writer who we've seen in uh, the comics, uh, take on Celestials. <laughs> just, just for, has been to hell. And uh, fought Mephisto, and all. I mean, we, we've seen all these things out of this character, uh, but now, what Robbie Reese is going to need to do is take on some uh, Confederate protesters in a subway station who are uploading videos for uh, a hate chant. And I'm I'm not making up that storyline. That's something Marvel ran with. It's like ah, oh, let's uh, and it, it goes to, and, and Robbie immediately like like uh, turns the entire subway train into a ghost rider train. I mean, it, it, the whole thing is, is ridiculous. And you look at that and go, why do I have to read the same stories over and over and over and over again? When do I get to see these characters? Like I, I would like to see Vixen take on dark side. What, why not? Let's, let's see it. And while she's taking on dark side, you do not need to uh, insert some things into the storyline that apocalypse is, uh, you know, is is somehow has a racial caste system like that. No, no, you don't need to do that. You also don't need to have Darkseid uh, tell witty jokes like, "I may be the most evil person in the galaxy, but uh, I'm not racist. I would never assume color." Like, like, dude, just have him be evil and have the characters beat the shit out of him. That's that's what we want. That is what we want. I I have talked to many a creator. Uh, who tell me that either a their editor kind of pushes them like you really we really do need to if we don't make a comment about racism in this book then people are going to wonder why we had the why we had the voice to call out racism and we did not use that voice to which I would say I, well number one you're covered you you've done it you can you can dial it back a little bit you don't need to do it every month every time this character comes to pass and two. I don't know. Uh, here's a crazy thought. Why don't you have Aquaman tackle dealing with some racism and you have the uh, black or Latino character just having some adventures for a change? How about that? Like, it, why do we always... Like, Aquaman gets to have just Aquaman adventures fighting angry fish. Whatever. But we've got it. But if it's a black character, then, oh, man, we got we got to do some black... Like, you, you know the, the fastest, quickest, best way to absolutely sabotage the uh, the new Jace Fox, uh, I am the real Batman, Batman, it's have him deal with racism. S seriously. Here, alternatively, have him come out, and he, the Penguin is is got something super bad going on, and he's chipping in some crazy shit that's turning people into mutants. I don't know. Man. New Killer Croc version 2, I, I have no idea. But send Jace Fox down there to beat them all up. That's what you do. I'm get captured by the penguin, strapped to some kind of table. They're aiming a giant laser at his junk. He's got to get free and save the day. See, so rip off James Bond for for a change. I don't know. It's um, it does get tiring. To your point, um, it gets it gets very exhausting. And to the comment of if we don't make if we don't comment on this this topic, then we're um, you know we're wasting our voice. Uh, no, to the contrary, uh, people know. Maybe you've done an effective job of delivering these messages, of delivering the social commentary. You've done a, an effective job of fighting off racism, comics. So take a break. Take five. You, you don't need to, you know, if people, you, you got the message through. And frankly, the message is already through. You'd be amazed. The vast majority of people are already aware that racism, racism is bad, you know, and the ones who are not aware not reading your comic. Meh. How about that? Anyway, great mail. Thanks for listening. Let me know your opinions in the comments below. Thank you.